I have a question for you. Which one of these was drawn with a mouse and which with a graphics tablet? If you couldn't tell, then you need to watch this video to find out how I did it. Tip tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to TipTart and welcome back to another Adobe Animate tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at how I drew this character here with the mouse and this character here with a graphics tablet. Now the tablet one is kind of obvious. I took out my pen and I drew the shapes and there you go, it's finished. But there's an age old question, which is how do I draw well in Adobe Animate with a mouse? And I'm going to show you a few different techniques today on how you can do that. Okay, so uh, bear with me. We're going to do a little bit of the things you shouldn't do first, and then we'll jump into the things that you absolutely, in my opinion, should do. So I've just got my character over here on the right, and we're going to recreate him with the mouse. Now, you might be thinking that I'm just going to grab my pen tool, going to crank the smoothing all the way up to 100 on my brush tool, sorry, uh, and just try and draw um, with a color you can see, <laughs> uh, try and draw a circle, which I'm going to do. And that's probably the best circle I can do with a mouse. It's pretty good, but you know, you'll see that we'll come into some shortcomings when I come to actually draw my character here. And this is where a lot of people get to and they say, oh, Adobe Animate's rubbish. I can't, I can't draw in it. And to be fair, if you try and draw like this, then I'd have that same conclusion too. Um, you could also then think, all right, I'll try and use the fluid brush tool, the latest one. I'm going to put the stabilizer all the way up there. The curves moving all the way up, uh, crank everything all the way up, you know, make it all really smooth, put a taper on it. So I've got some fake pressure sensitivity and I'm going to try and draw another circle. And you think, OK, I've now got some fake pressure sensitivity that might look a little bit better. But again, it's still not great at all. Moving on to the things that you should do. Here's how I recommend you draw inside of Adobe Animate with a mouse. You don't. Oh, I lied to you in the video title. I recommend you think of it more like sculpting rather than drawing. OK, and you can still achieve, as you saw in the original frame, a very similar and very smooth effect. There are three tools or four tools that are largely ignored most of the time in Adobe Animate. You've got your rectangle, circle, pentagon and line tools. I recommend you use these when you're drawing with a mouse. OK, and I'm going to show you how you can achieve this same effect here. So I'm just going to grab my circle tool here. I'm going to go down and pick my skin color uh, and I've just got some personal swatches here. But if you'd like to add your own, you can go to your color palette, choose a color and just hit add to swatches. And then that will make it appear down here in your list of swatches. So I'm going to grab my circle tool, make sure I've got a fill, but no stroke applied and holding shift. I'm just going to draw myself a perfect circle. Now, no one, no matter how good of an artist they are, can draw an absolutely mathematically perfect circle. And this is why things always look very artificial in Adobe Animate if you're using the shape tools. So I recommend this wonderful technique that Adobe Animate has built in, which is if you hover over the edges of your shapes, you can morph and twist and pull and sculpt your shapes a little bit. Now we're going to be doing nothing so dramatic as that. What we are going to do is just take the edges of our perfect circle and just pull and push them ever so slightly, just so that we've got something that isn't quite perfect. And you can see already how that adds something that's just a little bit more natural to our shape here. I'm going to hit F8 and I'm just going to turn this into a head. OK, uh, head two, I think I'll call that. Oh, that name's already been used. So head three. Um, and we'll come back and we'll add in this curve for the hair later on. But you might be wondering, OK, I can see how I can make a circle that's slightly smushed. But how do I make all these other shapes like the mouth and the teeth and things like that, too? Well, it's a combination of using these basic shape tools, the line tools and the morphing tool using the selection tool as the base. So let's take a look at the eyes first. I'm going to grab my circle tool again, and this time I'm going to remove my fill and I'm just going to add a stroke. Doesn't matter about the color. Holding shift, I'm going to get something which I think is about the right size for my eye and I can just hold it next to the head to see. Okay, yeah, that looks about right. Holding alt shift with that shape selected, I'm going to drag down until they overlap and I create this nice eye shape here. Then uh, I can just left click one of my lines, which will select all the way up to a point where the next angle hits and I'm just going to delete and that's going to give me my shape. Bringing up the paint fill tool with K, I'm just going to fill that in. Double click the line and delete it and then change that color to white with the eyedropper tool, which is shortcut I. For those who don't realize it, I've got all my shortcuts that I'm pressing down here at the bottom of the screen. OK, 
Okay, so selecting my eye now, I'm just going to hit F8, turn that into an eye and pop it on top of my character. Now, again, you can double click to go inside this shape. And if you want to, you can push and pull to make it look a little bit more natural. Okay, maybe something like that. Don't want to go too far on it because otherwise it's going to start to look wobbly. Okay, I think I prefer these looking perfectly smooth, but it's obviously completely up to you. The other good thing is you can press Q and squash and scale until you're happy. Alt shift and drag again will copy that shape over and it will be a duplicate of that same shape. What this means is if I go inside this shape now, okay, and I by double clicking and I remove my stroke again, and add just a black circle, you'll notice it's doing it to both of those graphics. Okay, so when I move these about, it's moving it about inside my other graphic as well. So I'm going to add this on a new layer inside the eye. So I'm just going to cut that, paste it in place with Command or Control Shift V. Uh, and then I'm just going to drag it down over my eye. Now, a quick tip for masking this, especially if you want to animate it later on, is you can Control C to copy your eye shape paste it in place on top of your pupil layer and then right click and choose mask and it will mask that layer underneath. So now we've got two eyes. If you unlock these layers, you can then adjust your pupil layer until you're happy and relock them again. We'll turn that mask back on. Okay, great. Let's go back outside of our eyes and we can see that we have the uh, eyes for our character pretty much done. I'm just going to retweak those a little bit and maybe reposition them on the head. Okay, so let's continue working on these facial features. Something for the nose, pretty simple. Once again, I'm going straight back to my um, oval tool. And this time I've got a linear gradient applied to it, um, as you can see. Um, if you don't know how to apply a linear gradient, it's pretty simple. You can just select a shape, go up to your color palette here, choose linear gradient from the drop down menu, and then you can double click on these points and choose colors from your color palette. So I'm just going to choose something like maybe this, or maybe, maybe this, that looks pretty good. I'm going to worry about the angle of the gradient and stuff afterwards. What I'm going to do now is just the same thing, grab my edges and I'm just going to pull it roughly into a nose shape. And again, you can see that you get some really nice natural looking shapes just by pushing and pulling. If you zoom in, you'll obviously get way more control. And you can start to flatten off the edges of your shape. That looks pretty good to me, but if I hit F8 and turn this into a nose, and go inside the nose, you'll notice that the gradient's kind of going the wrong way. So I'll just scale that up a little bit. Okay, we kind of want the gradient to be at the tip of the nose. So I'm going to select the shape and I'm going to choose my gradient tool here, gradient transform tool. If you don't see that, you can click these three dots on your edit toolbar uh, and it'll be in here somewhere and you can just drag and drop it onto your toolbar. So I'm going to select that tool and you'll notice I get this overlay. I can move the center of my gradient by grabbing the, uh, the dot here. I can rotate my gradient by grabbing the edge and I can scale up and down my gradient by dragging these bars. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to Pull it so that the same color as the skin is just overlapping the nose. And then I'm going to double click to come out of my gradient. So here I've done two completely different colors. So uh, I'll just fix that. I can select my linear gradient again and change these colors to the darker two. Boom. And you'll notice that it keeps the position of our original gradient, which is fantastic. Hi everybody, just wanted to interrupt the tutorial really quickly to say that I'm super excited about all the new Tip Top merch that has been added to the store recently. We've got hoodies, t-shirts, and new pencil cases. So if you're really struggling with the mouse and want to go back to pencil and paper, you can take all of your drawing tools and stuff them inside a new Tip Top pencil case that encourages you to learn the why, not just the how. Go to youtube.com slash tip top slash store to get all of your merch right now. Thanks very much, let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, great, let's take a look at the uh, eyebrows quickly. I'm just gonna duplicate my nose, break it apart with Control B, which turns it back into a normal shape. And then I'm gonna choose my lighter color, like so. I'm gonna scale it down, hit F8 again, and call it Eyebrow 2. I'm labeling everything 2 because I've obviously got them already labeled over here for this shape. Then I'm just gonna rotate it, and position it in place. 
rather than rotating it, rotating it again, I'm going to click Modify, Transform, Flip Horizontal. And that'll make sure that the rotation is the same. I can scale these up if I think they're looking a little bit too small. And again, holding Alt Shift, I can copy that, rotate it, position it down here. And now he's got a little, um, what's the word for a beard that's just like that? Goatee, that's not right. You know what I mean. Really simple, okay, great. Let's take a look at his mouth then because we've got all sorts of cool stuff going on here. I'm gonna go back to my trusty circle tool and don't worry, we'll be using the rectangle tool in a minute. And I'm gonna select my darkest color over here. And I'm just gonna draw a circle that's roughly the right size. Again, just pull it, pull that top shape down and you'll get something that resembles a mouth shape. Now this, you can notice the edges here are a little bit more straight. So I'm just gonna come in and I'm just gonna pull these down just by clicking and dragging the edges of these shapes until I get something a little bit more consistent. That looks about right. Then I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool, told you we'd get there, turn off the fill and just add a bright gray stroke so it's easy to see. And I'm just gonna drag over the top until I see my teeth. That looks about right. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna take the edge of my shape and just pull it down. Selecting the inside now because of the intersect, intersecting stroke will allow me to change that fill color to white. Double clicking the stroke will remove it. And you can see I've now got teeth inside my mouth. I'm gonna do the same thing with the circle tool to create the tongue, or you can just draw a line and then pull that line. And you'll notice because it's intersecting with a shape, it automatically creates those edges for us here. I can then go to my pink color and fill it in with my paint bucket tool. Double click the line and it's gone. So you can see how we're really, we're sculpting more than drawing, but we're getting a very, very similar result um, to, with our mouse than as we got with our tablet over here. Okay, put the mouse over here, uh, mouth over here rather, but you'll notice that uh, it's a little bit too small and not really in the right position. So I'm just gonna select that and hold control and press down and that'll push it down in the layer stack until it's below the nose. And then at this point, you can come back in and start tweaking the controls. I'm going to move the anchor point of my nose so that I can scale it a little bit better. You can come in and start tweaking all the positions of your things until you're happy. Okay, you're looking pretty good. So let's talk about the hair now. If you go inside here, you'll notice the hair is made up of a number of different chunks, but all using the same techniques. Okay. And this will allow me to animate it nicely later on. And you'll also notice that I've deformed the head a little bit as well. Um, but what I'm gonna do first of all, is I'm actually just gonna scale up his head just a little bit because his face is a bit big at the moment. So we're gonna select all of his face elements, do like this. And this is one thing I like about drawing with the mouse that you don't get when you're drawing with a tablet is you can scale all these things and come back in and tweak them really easily. Because you made them with the mouse, there's only a very small amount of control points. And because of that, things look really smooth and really nice. Okay, so let's grab our circle tool once again, get rid of our stroke color here. Grab ourselves a nice big circle for the hair and just start pushing and pulling and morphing. Because this is the only thing that isn't a symbol as well, it will automatically go behind all of your other symbols and you can just pull and push into position until you're happy with the main chunk of your hair. Okay, I'm just gonna pull like this. Now that we've got to the hair as well, you might find yourself needing some points rather than curves. And if you hold control whilst hovering over the edge of a shape and then pull, you'll notice that you get a point rather than a, a curve. And this is actually adding a physical point to the outline of your shape. So you can pull out a point just a little bit if you wanted something a bit more like this, you know, with like a pointed edge, okay? Uh, let's do that for this one because why not? Um, and I'm gonna hit F8 and just call that hair top. Um, I'll press Control Shift down to push it back to the back of the stack. Let's get another circle. Straighten it off a little bit, hit F8. I'm gonna call this hair tuft. And I'm gonna move the anchor point so that I can just rotate it easily. Control Shift down, we'll push it to the back of the stack. Copy and paste it. 
squish it down a little bit. And there you go, you've got two hair tufts, okay? To save time, I'm just gonna duplicate this with Alt and Shift, scale it down, rotate it, stretch him out a bit, and position him behind our body. If you're not too happy with it, well, that looks, that looks quite nice with the little tail actually flicking out there, so I think I'll keep that. Um, you can duplicate to the other side, modify, transform, flip horizontal, control shift down, push it to the back of the stack. All right, looking pretty good. Let's do his ears because you'll notice he's got these little swirls on them. I'm gonna duplicate the head. Control B will break that apart. And holding shift, I can scale it down. Already got a rough circle, so why not use it again? Let's press F8, call it ear, and go inside the ear with a double click. And I'm going to zoom in on the ear. I might add a new layer on top and then using my pencil tool, which we spoke about earlier, I'm going to change up my smoothing all the way and make sure that my smooth is on smooth. Uh, and I'm going to give it a stroke that is a dark pink color. Okay. And I'm going to remove the fill and then I'm just going to draw my best spiral. And you'll notice that it really smooths it out for you. It's a bit thin though. So let's turn up the stroke width to about six. Much better. Boom. And you'll notice that you can do the same thing, okay? You can start pulling out all the different corners of this spiral until you get something that you're happy with. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm also gonna add a slight gradient to this fill. So I'm gonna go to my colors, linear gradient, and then I'm gonna, or, or you could go down to your swatches panel here and select it from your existing swatches if you've already got them. And I'm just gonna drag that center over so it's only dark on the other side. Coming out of my ear just by double clicking, I can then position this guy where I want. Command shift down to put him at the back, but then command up until he's above the hair, obviously. Uh, and then we'll just position him like so. Alt shift, modify, transform, flip horizontal. Command shift down and then control up again. And there you go, looking pretty good. Okay, he's got some ears, he's got some hair, he's got some eyebrows, but he doesn't have a fringe at the moment. Really easy to fix using our existing shape tool. Again, one of the benefits of using the mouse is there's only a few control points. So I can just come up here to the edge of his head and pull it down. Let's tweak it until we're happy. I'm gonna hold control and pull up a point. So I've got a nice sharp corner to the edge of his head here. Double click out of it, and yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, great. Um, let's move on to the neck. Now we're gonna use the rectangle tool for the neck. I've still got my gradient on the fill, but I don't want a stroke. I'm gonna draw myself a nice, chunky, thick rectangle. And you'll notice you can pull the points around in the same way that you can pull around the curved lines, but they will keep the lines absolutely diagonally straight. And then you can just come in on the curves and add in a little bit of detail if you want to, okay? Maybe something like that. Or actually, let's do it this way around just in case we animate the head later on. So let's bring in the top of his neck, just a touch. Select the shape. I'm going to change this gradient to be dark at the top and normal skin tone at the bottom. Select it, hit F8, call it neck two. Command shift down, sorry, control shift down. I've been teaching a lot on Macs recently uh, and drag it behind the head and then just squash and stretch him until you think you're happy with the way it looks. If you've tapered it a bit too much, you can obviously double click the shape and just pull out these points again. Again, so good, because if you drew this with a tablet, there'd be so many points because of your wobbly hand, you wouldn't be able to get this level of control. Okay, pretty good. Let's quickly do the body then as the last final step. Uh, I'm gonna go to my rectangle tool, grab myself a nice dark, reddish uh, blue color. So like a nice rich maroon purple. Uh, and I'm just gonna curve the edges of this shape. Might pull out either bottom here, just because he's gonna have slightly wider ships, uh, hips than he does shoulders. Curve the edges of our chest a little bit. And then once again, using our pen tool, or maybe even using our rectangle tool might be a bit simpler. I'm gonna go remove my fill color, add a gray stroke, holding shift, 
I'm just going to create a square. It doesn't matter about the thickness of the stroke because it doesn't actually apply that thickness. So I'm just going to hold shift until it goes diagonally the other way. With my selection tool, position that in the center of my shirt. Like so. And then you'll notice that it automatically has clipped to the edges of the shape. So if I were to select these extra edges, I can delete them now if I wanted to. Before I do that though, I'm going to eyedropper um, or apply perhaps maybe just a block color of skin to there and remove the rest of the body. Selecting both of those, hit F8, it's called body. Oops, excuse me, body two. Command shift down, control shift down, we'll pop it to the back of the stack. Okay, looking pretty good. Last few final steps then. I'm gonna grab my body, duplicate it, hit control B. Eyedropper its own color so that it turns all the same shape to the same color. Press Q, I'm gonna rotate that 45 degrees by holding shift, scale it down, and look at that, we've got a sleeve. But this sleeve does need a gradient, so I'm gonna apply one of my pre-made ones, which is this darker one here. Uh, and that's gonna obviously apply it in the wrong direction, of course, so we can just rotate that so the darker option's up in the corner, and that the lighter side of it is right at the edge of the sleeve. I'm gonna hit then F8, Call this sleeve left. I'm going to quickly reposition the rotation point up here just so that I can more easily position this behind the body with control shift down and rotate it into place. Looks pretty good. Inside that sleeve layer, I'm going to add a new layer underneath with a straight up rectangle. Remove the stroke. Select the arm color and then just position it in place. Maybe something like that. And you can see I'm being fairly blase because I know that I can control however much I need to with my curved selection tools, even down to the point of just bringing this arm in line with the bottom of the body. You get such a level of control here that it really doesn't matter. And there you go, that's behind the arm there. So you guessed it, we're gonna duplicate this, modify, transform, flip horizontal. Control shift down and push it to the back of the stack. And there you go. Last step, we might as well do it. We'll add, um, well, well, actually we'll thin up his face a little bit because he's looking a bit, uh, a bit chonky compared to his other portion there. And you'll notice that his hair is now overlapping his ear. So we'll just control shift down, push to the back. Uh, inside the arm layer, I'm gonna add a new layer on top just for ease of use. With my line tool selected and no fill, I'm just gonna draw a straight line going out like so. And then gonna position the points where I want the ends of each hair to be. And then just pull the curve, really simple. And that is pretty much it. Let's duplicate these down a little bit by just holding Alt and releasing. Uh, let's make sure they're the right color, not some random gray. Same color as his hair. And there you have it. So you can see, yes, that took a little bit of a while, but once you've done it once, it becomes quite quicker. Uh, and once you realize you can reduplicate and use shapes, it becomes really quick, okay? And as you can see, you can get a really lovely result Tablet compared to mouse, I can't really tell the difference there. Mouse compared to mouse, the only difference I can tell is that he's got slightly different face shapes because I've made him twice and I've changed his hair a little bit, okay? So hopefully you can understand that drawing with a mouse in Adobe NA is absolutely possible. You just have to change the way that you think a little bit about it, okay? Um, and just because I've done this in a flat design style, there is no reason you can't do it in a style with edges. I know a lot of people like these big, thick, black lines in Adobe Animate, and so do I. There is no reason you can't do it and just change it to look like this. It looks like ASDF style, yeah, of animation, okay? Um, with these lines as well, if you find yourselves um, still creating things that are a little bit too wobbly, you can just choose these shape options here to smooth or straighten, which will remove um, all of the tweaks and pushes you've done to it. So don't worry about undoing your steps either. Well, that is it for today's tutorial. Thank you very much for watching everybody. I do hope you've enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time for another episode of Tip Tut.
I'd like to say a massive thank you to my level two and above members, Unknown Ghosts, WN62, Anonymous, Brew Draws, Mel M. Hoover, Maybe Sharma, Ralika M, Mun336, and Ian Costello. You guys are lovely. If you'd like to get exclusive membership to a Discord, shoutouts, and personal design feedback, check out the membership to Tip Tut Zone by clicking the join button below. for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.